Hello, this is Mario from Odeon. In this video, we will learn about loading impulse responses directly into Odeon. Odeon allows you to load impulse responses, whether they were obtained through Odeon or externally, meaning using any other software or equipment. In order to do this, you will need to have your impulse response in an uncompressed WAVE file. You can load your impulse response without even having a room model open. To do this, you either click on this button, or click on the Tools menu in the top menu bar, then unload Impulse Response. The default Odeon installation comes with some impulse responses that we can use as an example. We will navigate to the location of the WAVE file and double click on it. The tabs show the same information and are navigated the same way as if you had done the measurement in Odeon. So, to learn about them, we recommend to watch our previous video on the measurement system. In Odeon, you can add measured data to multipoint jobs. This is done for different purposes, such as comparing simulations against measurements or using the genetic material optimizer. One way to add measured data is by formatting it in a spreadsheet. But if you have impulse responses of your measurements, you can directly add the parameters derived from them to a job. To be able to add the measured data to a model, you will need to have the model open. Before you actually add the data, we would recommend you to load all your impulse responses and inspect them to make sure there aren't any issues, such as bad onset times or parameters that were not derived. You can load multiple impulse responses at once by selecting them all in the Load Impulse Response window. Once you have made sure that your impulse responses look right, there are a couple of ways to add them to your multipoint jobs. You can add each impulse response individually by going to the Context Sensitive menu, then selecting either of these Add Measured Parameters to Multipoint Job options. The second one will close the impulse response after adding the parameters. However, you can also add parameters from a batch of impulse responses at once. This will first require to format the file names, which should end with a pattern of letters, numbers, letters, numbers. The first group of numbers will be read as the job number, and the second group as the receiver number. You can have additional descriptions at the beginning of the file name. These are some examples of file names that work. If you have defined your job list so that the job number equals the active source, then you could also use the S for source rather than the J for job. Then, in the job list, go to the context sensitive menu, and then to add measured data from impulse responses to multipoint jobs. Here, you simply select all the impulse responses with formatted file names and they will be allocated to the corresponding jobs and receivers. If we go back to the Simulated versus Measured and Targets tab in the Multipoint response, you can see that the measured data shows up. Now, let's talk about Impulse Response Statistics. If you open a batch of impulse responses while no room is currently open, you will also get this statistics window. It will show data from all your impulse responses in a way similar to a multipoint response. You can look at different groupings of data, either by scrolling past the individual receiver results, or clicking on these icons which will scroll down to each section. For example, you can go to the frequency parameters ordered by receiver, Broadband parameters ordered by receiver, statistics for frequency parameters, and statistics for broadband parameters. The Energy Parameter Bars 1 tab will show the parameter bars for all impulse responses simultaneously. 
different impulse responses are color-coded. And as usual, you can cycle through different parameters using the left and right arrows. The energy parameter bars 2 tab will show the broadband parameters for each impulse response. The statistics tab will show some additional statistic results. Here you can see the average, minimum, maximum, and standard deviation values derived from all impulse responses. Remember that for these statistics to be meaningful, the impulse responses should typically all be with the same source and different receivers. Finally, the frequency receiver tab will show the parameters in function of frequency and receiver separately. In the first subplot, you have the receiver in the horizontal axis, and you can change the octave band with the up and down arrows. In the second subplot, you have the frequency in the horizontal axis, and you can change the receiver with R and Shift R. Pressing left and right will change the parameter on both subplots. A useful trick in Odeon is that if you directly load the recording of an impulsive sound in a room, Odeon will still process it as an impulse response and derive parameters. For example, you can make a quick snapshot measurement of the room by recording a balloon pop or hand claps with a smartphone and derive preliminary parameters from that recording. Of course, you shouldn't consider this a final accurate measurement, but it can serve for survey purposes. To read more about this method of measurement, you can go to our website, Learn, Application Notes, Measurements with a Smartphone. If you recorded a series of hand claps in a single WAV file, you can actually load the file, and Nodian will try to identify and use the one impulse response with the best signal to noise ratio. Only the clap currently enclosed between an onset and truncation time will be used to derive the results. If you manually set the onset and truncation times to enclose a different clap, then the results will be derived with that clap instead. Remember that you can change the onset time by pressing the O key, then clicking on the waveform just before the desired onset. This will also automatically adjust the truncation time. Now I will talk about a couple of other things you can do with impulse responses. The first is the ability to crop the impulse response. This is especially useful when you have impulse responses with very long portions of audio without useful information. You can do this in the Raw Impulse Response tab or Raw Decay Curve tab. First, zoom into the desired portion of the signal by holding left click and dragging towards the bottom right. The impulse response will only be cropped in time, so the vertical zoom does not matter. Then, go to the context sensitive menu and select crop impulse response. You can also use the C shortcut. You can then save a new WAV file, which will only contain the currently visible portion of audio. If you are cropping very close to the truncation time, be aware that the truncation time can vary in different octave bands, so be careful not to trim off the decay curve in other octave bands. The other feature is the Play It tab. Here, you can easily convolve your current impulse response with an anechoic signal file. First, you select the directory that contains the anechoic recording you wish to use. And then, you select the signal file. 
if you click on play input signal, this plays only the signal file itself, without applying the impulse response. If you click on play convolution, then you will listen to the combination of the signal file and the impulse response. Keep in mind that when using monaural impulse responses, you will get the reverberation and frequency characteristics, but not the binaural experience, so that would technically not be an oralization. Play Impulse Response will only play the Impulse Response WAVE file. With that, we conclude this tutorial, and we hope you have found it useful. Good luck!